Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Midheaven Podcast. This is your host, Peace Taylor. And I'm Candice Marie, and we are back. We're back in action. It has been um, a total shit show getting this episode going, but that's what happens when Mercury squares the nodes. Um, you got to just roll with those punches. How are you doing? You're like Mr. Mercury King. The other, like, was it last week that you were like, yeah, Mercury, Mercury. How's he, how's he treating you now? I don't know. You think you're cool with Mercury. Like, oh, I'm a Gemini. Mercury's not going to mess with me. And the next thing you know, you're stranded waiting for a lift because the lift driver wants you to cancel. And so it says 10 minutes for 45 minutes and you're out there in the cold. So, you know, Mercury has been, I feel like Mercury just plays pranks on me and on everyone really but is this is this like a personalized experience where just certain <laughs> things happen it's like you and effort like there's no way this is a coincidence like and then you start to meditate. it like is there a lesson teaching this to me right now and the whole time mercury's like no bitch i'm totally pranking you <laughs> Sounds like you need to go home and give an offering to Mercury. Have you done that? You know what? I don't give offerings. Maybe they're wanting my attention. Okay, so here's what I do, whether you guys are having a really gnarly Mercury transit or if it's a Mercury retrograde, I'll put out a shot of whiskey, some chocolate, a couple of oranges, maybe a couple coins, tobacco, and any incense or any herbs that are associated with Mercury. Or I'll like. Water. Yeah, or Ellie Wah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I was going through my closet the other day and I was getting all excited about the, the Daishiki episode because that's definitely coming. Like, we're oh, going to do yes. that. We're going to do the full African garb and we're going to exchange heritage stories I about the roots have of our. Accent. It'll be perfect. You, can you do a Nigerian prince accent? Like, this, like the scam princess? I mean, if you will give me your debit card number i will give you millions of dollars <laughs> i'm not a scam artist there's no 419 they're legit are you sure you're not just trying to get papers from me no no all right no. i'm just making I'm sure because i can't have any more of that going on in my life that's in the 90s where, where i'm too expensive people? for that you can't afford me <laughs> you really can't afford me i'm a very i'm a very expensive wife i mean I, you know, I have millions in, in uh, my Nigerian castle back home. I just need your uh, debit card and we can process. All right, process. It's great, process. That's going to be a funny episode. That's gonna be fun. I'm excited to talk about all of our crazy um, spiritual experiences that have to do with our heritage. I, mm. I named this episode... Um, what is it? What did I name it? I named it something. <laughs> I, named, I, I put it on the stream, but whatever. Um, I think it's called Mission to Mars, if I remember correctly, because there's just a lot of like cool Mars aspects that we'll get into at the end of the podcast. Um, starting with kind of some of the interesting tidbits and in the uh, news for the week. Um, number one, I think it's super cool. I was reading this in the news. See if I can pull this up here. Um, but NASA is actually in the process of testing a rocket to put the first woman and the next man on the moon. So they're testing this rocket. Hopefully they are going to launch um, somewhere in 2024. So it's a couple years away. Um, I'm stoked for that. For some reason, I feel like I should have known this. And I don't know if it's because I was watching that show on, is it Apple? Is it the show about the astronauts from the 70s. I thought a woman had already been on the moon. I guess this is Wouldn't news be crazy to me. Wouldn't if a woman was the... We're about to have a, the, the, a woman be the first person on the moon. Oh! Oh! No, no, no. The first woman. So there's been 12 men in general that have walked the moon. But the moon landing... Not just Armstrong? Or no, no. Armstrong? There were several. There were several. And, Do um, they still have the technology to get there? I would assume so. Mm. I hope so. <laughs> I think that's why they're testing the rocket is to make sure they don't blow people up. Yeah. Could you imagine if it was filmed? That would be crazy. I mean, I, I am excited to see a woman on the moon. I'm really stoked for that. And I'm also, I think she it's... Wouldn't be, she'd be the, she wouldn't be the first one. She would, would be she? the first woman to walk on the moon. Imagine if the moon starts to get an attitude like, oh, finally, <laughs> someone who I can vent to. All these men coming on the moon here. Um... 
there I, I mean it's crazy i didn't even know that they were still trying to push getting people back to the moon but i guess they are and they are trying to get there in a couple years but yeah the most of the project they're doing like this one guy he's he's a i applied for it too he's looking for like six people to take to the moon with him or like three people to go to the moon. You never heard of it? Put a pin in this because I want to tell you about my Mars story. Because that's we're going to talk about this at the end about how NASA, I applied to go to Mars and you did not take me. All right. And I'm still not NASA, happy yet about you it. You need astrologers <laughs> on your team. What do you like? Stop telling me there's 13 <laughs> signs. You have no astrologers. You've never read a chart. Like, what, like what, what, what's that? That's like me on this podcast telling people, oh, you know, astrophysics and, 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 NASA information that was super vague but you know I was thinking to myself I was like how the hell have they not had a moon landing like since the 19 what 19 between 19 1969 1972 so what the fuck has NASA been doing this entire time I mean I know there was like they took the cameras and and Juno and everything and they went out to the solar system and they saw the other planets but Mm What have they been doing? Spending trillions of taxpayer money. I mean, uh, discovering <laughs> discovering the frontiers for mankind and showing us their CG. I mean, the views of what's out there. Okay, so wait a second. Hold on. Do you think that the moon landing was fake? I talk about this all the time, by the way. If you don't know me personally, I'm a, I'm a nutbag about this stuff. I'm a naive. I kind of, I believe the world is round and I believe that the moon landing was real but then the one thing that makes me iffy is the whole stanley kubrick uh how about when you zoom in and you look at the reflections on their fucking helmets i'm telling you that was a stage and i'm not saying we can't get to the moon so i'm not saying we haven't have been the to the moon anymore to get there and that's when i was like wait but what? they're trying to get us to mars how do you how do, how do you not have the technology to get to the moon but you've been in the moon before but then you just said that there's plenty of people who've been in the moon though besides. yeah 12 12 men 12. not women men we haven't had lady parts on the moon yet but we're getting there we're gonna find the technology we're the gonna make it happen to feel a vagina you, wouldn't you think surface, that the moon so don't, don't you think that the it's moon like, yes. the moon's a feminine planet like you you need pussy on that planet Max, if, if, Max. sorry i went there oh, this, this is a late night show this is not for children <laughs> what if the moon needs someone to have sex on the planet to contact who's going to be the first person to have sex on the moon this is this is sci- this is for science this, this is science i think about these things all the time you need to give the moon love and experience I am so excited to get into the beef of the show because... Um, Who do you think the first sign would be to do that? Sagittarius? Cancer? You think it'd be Cancer? I think it'd be Sag. I don't know. I think it would be Sag or I think that there would be some like freaky like Geminis. Yeah. <laughs> because I could be. see how like a Gemini could certainly <laughs> settle for bases and not a home run. Moon I mean, sex. technically that's sex on the moon. So right. I'm going to go there. Um, oh my God, the, just everybody's going to think we're nuts. So, so yeah, so NASA's doing this test. Um, hopefully there's more from that. Um, two, Major Biden is back in the White House. Did you hear about this? About how, okay, so supposedly, and it, they never came out and said that Biden's dog bit somebody, but they just said, well, okay, his, um, his, uh, his uh, rescue dog, who's, a, I think, a German Shepherd, apparently had an incident with somebody at the White House and was removed and was taken to go back to his home for training um, in Delaware. Major. His name is Major. Oh, yeah. Okay. They have Major and Champ, and they were both adopted dogs. So apparently there was an incident. We don't know what happened, um, but he had to go back to Delaware for training, and now the dog is back in the White House. The dog went for training. Yeah, because he clearly bit somebody who worked at the white house they, they didn't say come out and say that he bit somebody but like come on that's not fair to the dog there's so many slimy people in the white house like what if he, what if he was right where why are, where are the dog rights well and that's what that's what i think uh biden came out and said he was like well he's he's a he's an adopted dog he's like you know and there's all these like weird guys in black coats and walkie talkies walking around because security's like hardcore in the white house um, and he was just like, what do you expect? So I think the dogs are going to go back and forth. Um, that's not like super exciting news, but I thought that was interesting. Mm. Um, touching on some stuff we talked about in a recent podcast. Also, another thing that I brought up is Trump teasing having his own media platform. Did you hear about this? I thought, it was, I thought Gab was his platform, but 
Um, I did hear about it, and guys, prepare for the storm because this is Uranus square Saturn. Like this is this is this is a continuing narrative of what happened before. You know, and I think the timing of it is just like genius. But um, this is gonna be a wild summer. Yeah, I mean. Uh... I don't know. I'm kind of wondering to see what's going to happen. Like when we talked about in the previous episode, some of the retrograde stuff that's going to happen in Gemini and then the eclipses. It's like all on his personal planets. Like Trump's coming out with something, but I think it's funny that he was like teasing it because I kind of wonder after what happened with like Parler and a couple other things, is it going to work? Parler's back. Who saved Parler? Somebody came and like saved Parler is what I heard. I don't know what the deal was, but I saw something about like either another company playing a role in getting them out or something. I don't know, but yeah, I don't. I'm not even sure. The thing, the thing with this though is the whole notion. Saturn in Aquarius is the collective narrative, which is the authoritarian mainstream uh, group, and then you have Uranus and Taurus. That's like the individual, independent, you know, manifestation. And so you're gonna have the short skirmishes of new sites come out spearheaded by and i just love that donald trump has uranus on his son and so we can actually track uranus's transit to like what happens with them and my prediction is we're going to see these get stomped and, and censored by saturn but then they'll continue to come back up and then eventually stick well, the squares are going to happen a couple times. So, you know, one of the squares already happened back in February. There's another one coming in June. And then we've got another one that's going to be happening around Christmas. So obviously, like we talked about this and we'll talk about it as we get closer. But June is a hot month. That is a, a oh very end of May even going into June. It's going to be um, really kind of crazy. So I'm kind of like wondering, you know, if the first square was like all the Robin Hood stuff that happened the second square, I feel, is going to be like kind of like Saturn laying down the law and trying to keep certain physical Taurus things manifesting and getting kind of chaotic. So it's gonna, it's gonna see, um, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna get colorful. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't know um, that. And going back to the other uh, topic that I was talking about, so we can get back into um, talking about the planet stuff because we'll probably go on and on about this. So I was thinking the other day, and this was like one of my really like stone deep thoughts. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> so I started thinking because, you know, Elon Musk is trying to get people obviously to Mars and like there's this whole race to Mars Elon and like, Musk is an alien. have you heard about his recent stuff about how he came and like changed his title, like from CEO to like, I don't know what it is. It's like coin King or something like that crypto 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 king yeah like he's trying to change his titles and he's basically just doing anything and everything possible to like piss off um whoever whoever is out there patrolling these large companies i thought the, he was a capricorn but he's a cancer fcc he's a cancer and so i thought that was dope like him and bezos are going back and forth for number one cancer versus capricorn who do you think it's gonna be though who? Who do you think it's going to be that's going to like, because, you know, you know, Bezos kind of stepped down because his, he's putting so much focus and emphasis also on all the space stuff. Mm. I didn't know he was interested in space. Basically. All those billionaires are. They're they're trying. To, I, I'm convinced. They need somewhere to escape. When yeah. It's like they know something. They know something. They, they know. Oh, it's like no. they've spent the last 10 years oh, doing nothing no. but build their bunkers. And it's like now every all the scientists are like, we're going to run out of air. We're, we're not going to have enough food. We're not going to have enough resources. So they're like fucking opening their wallets going, guess we're going to Mars, kids. Is I mean, this the apocalypse? I have yeah, a feeling there is already like there is already like camps on Mars. I yeah. think we're all being my friend National projected there and said that they were not only camps, but then someone some like soldier told her to go back and she got ejected back. And even though I thought she was crazy, I also thought she was telling the truth because she be on point with her channeling. I don't know. Elon must know something because just with some of the stuff that he's doing, like trolling people and like now you can buy a Tesla with like Bitcoin and they must see the value of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and where all of this stuff is going to start saying like, hey, you can buy a car this way. I mean, I was at my acupuncturist office today and there was a sign that said, we accept Bitcoin. I think my friend bought a Lamborghini or a Lamborghini coin with Ethereum. And he had like... A Lamborghini coin? It, if it wasn't a Lamborghini? Like an actual car? 
I don't think it was a car because he got like some kind of badge. So I think he converted his Ethereum with their stock. Uh huh. Or he got a car, but I think he got stock. And then they gifted him some like badge or something. Huh. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been deep in that. I've been deep in that. Been doing that with my with my man. We've got like a crypto wallet. We're focusing on um, watching when Ethereum and Bitcoin drops. We'll buy some stuff, and we're working with like Gemini because you can hold it. You know who made that, right? It's the two, two it's twins. the twins from Facebook, and it's like a holding. They're from Facebook. Yeah, they're the guys who like sued Zuckerberg over like stealing the 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 Facebook idea. The Winklevoss twins. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so my, that's like I'm I'm so great because I want to convert my money to Gemini coins. So like I'm gonna have Mercury on my right. Okay, and- they have all kinds of cool stuff. The way that it's working and it works, I think I I don't think it's with Coinbase or something. But basically, you can go and hold your cryptocurrency. So like we hold Ethereum and Bitcoin, and it'll pay you a percentage. And it's a pretty it's, it's like a pretty interest, decent right? interest. It's a uh, Blockify. Yeah, we're working with Blockify. Blockify. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing so. It on their Gemini. We'll see. I'll show you how it works with the ones that we have. But if you're using it just to hold it, like if you're one of those people who's convinced that this is going to be the new freak like currency, I think it is. um, And you're not really trading it. You're just holding it. It's cool because you can put it in this account and just let it sit there and it's going to make interest percent in cryptocurrency. So you can get the interest in Bitcoin. You can get the interest in um, what's the other one? Ethereum. Ethereum. That's what I'm doing for both of them. Yeah, so it's like that's my yacht fund, I kids. Have my second house in Gemini, and I have Mercury on my rising, so I'm gonna rock Hermes and just spend Gemini coins. You go on? Are you into like fancy like watches and jewelry and shit? That second second house stuff. I'm gonna make fancy exclusive designer astro watches. You should, because you have a cat moon, mm-hmm. and you can make them like out of like all kinds of. They'll be they'll be a uh, um, high end so. It'll be like diamonds and crystals. Of course, and rubies and garnets and all that other cap stuff. And then and then also an app too, uh, where it can kind of work like a Fitbit. So if you don't want the fancy stuff, it could be like a... I'm surprised no one has done this already. I mean, the only thing... I'm, I'm kind of stoked for it because in my mind, it's like I've gotten to this point where I'm like, okay, I can go and blow $2,000 on... Going on a nice weekend where I can buy myself a really nice bag. But why would I do that when I could hopefully stick it in my crypto wallet and within 10 years, I'm going to have a million fucking billion dollars. So that's the plan. Probably not that much, but we'll see. <laughs> I mean, if you knew 10 years, you know, how, how, how worth is it, is it to invest for 10 years? And I mean, that's really that's what Uranus and Taurus wants to teach people the long game. Like. Well, and it's shaking up currency because when we look at the last time it went through, like I think it was in the 40s or something when it went through Taurus. It was like the Great Depression. Yeah. We also saw that there was just like a lot of different coins in circulation. And that's Mm -hmm. also when we brought in um, bonds and people could buy bonds. So there was like a lot of weird incentives when it came to like currency and money and like a lot of like changes. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's something that's that's kind of exciting it also makes me wonder you know i saw a thing on the internet the other day and i saw all of the different um british um bills like all the pounds throughout the years with all of the different versions of the queen well she's son in taurus we talked about that in the last episode and just looking at you know uranus going through taurus and making squares um to saturn i wonder well what's going to happen to these bills when God save the queen. But when that inevitably does happen, are we going to put like the prince on there? Like who's going to be on there? That's fascinating. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, I can't understand how they're constantly like changing money. Like to me, that's cool, but it's also like kind of weird because we're so used to seeing the same thing. I mean, most of what we've seen is like what the new $20 bills and the new hundreds. I can't think of anything other than that. Which is also wild. Ours doesn't change. Yeah. Um, and it's the same person, right? Just different, like yeah, uh, like it's her places. throughout the years. I don't oh, know. Okay. I I don't know. I think oh that uh, I think it'll be interesting to see. It's definitely like by the time you know Uranus is out of Taurus, like I th- I think we are gonna totally be in a situation where we're inching our way even more so towards a global currency, whether it's oh crypto God. or what it ends up being. Um, it'll be unofficial before it's official, for sure. For sure. And I think our generation is going to witness the end of, even though they're a constitutional monarchy, I think we're going to witness the end of like 
monarchy. Like, well, also. yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely Witnessing. coming. But I mean, I, some of those people are probably still going to do what's ever possible to um, stay. Yeah, like kind of stay. I mean, because they're making money just from being this this these these figures i mean they're, they're not really doing anything they're making money they've already finessed us the past 30 years and made all the money they need to off of us i don't know we're not as like fixated and obsessed with that stuff as much as like the rest of the world i mean i like watching the royal weddings but that's about it mm. but we don't really have that especially coming out of like you know the last what eight years of having just a terrorist in office <laughs> sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i know that i know how you feel about about your eight boy eight years i thought he was in for four um oh yeah he was in for four see, okay maybe no, it was see, eight years no, see, he, maybe he's still president <laughs> not, not, you th- do you really think that i mean he's not officially president but Here's the here's, here's oh. the thing. he has an office of former president and and negative Nancy Pelosi failed to indict this man and so technically he's still president he's not the current president he's just former president and so you know God damn you know I'm waiting for his like insane like crazy hostile takeover that's coming like the Mad King in June I'm I'm ready for it I did think you between remember, did you tell me I think you're the one who launched it. he wrote that letter who's like hey just in case y'all forgot I'm the reason why y'all have vaccines like, <laughs> if it wasn't for the dawn y'all would still be waiting for me. that was so gangster I was like why, why is he gone why is he gone oh wow oh my gosh um okay so back to back to my deep 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 pot thoughts are you ready for this so i was thinking astrology works because it's about our perspective right here from earth and how the planets affect souls on earth so if we go and colonize mars what happens well I love that you said that because a lot of a lot of things critics say is that because and, and that's what I appreciate about you, Candace, because you really bring the intuitive soul to it where that's that's hard to for people to kind of accept because because a lot of people will uh, really flex and say, oh, the planets don't affect your personality and that's a really misleading way to uh that 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 skeptics kind of understand how this works the planets of course mathematically engage with each other as far as the the ecliptic of the sun the path and then the sun's uh, the earth's equator so it's literal narrative with the relationship with the planets and the sun and, and those angles tell us a story you know oppositions versus sextiles so if we did colonize Mars, then we would have horoscopes with Earth in a sign. Right. Okay. So so he, so hear me out on this. So you can look at your horoscope, like when you're looking at transits and you look at how the moon is affecting things or how Mercury is fucking things up today, obviously, and how that's affecting us here on Earth. Mm-hmm. You now, you can look at the helio chart and you can see everything that's going on more so from the Earth. Sun. From, no, 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 from... From Earth? Oh, no, no, you're right, from the sun. And then you can From the sun's Earth. perspective, yeah. Okay. And then you see how all the planets move. So let's say we do end up living in Mars, whatever. So we, we end up living there. Does that mean that we... Does it affect... Does it affect Mars? Like, does it affect the power of Mars when you think about that? Because here on Earth, Mars touches with the North Node. We're going get to get into that in a second. It brings a lot of Martian energy in. But if you're living on Mars and that's happening, are you looking for really strong Earth transits? How does that... Does that make sense what I'm asking you? No, it makes perfect sense. If you're on Mars, you're going to live the Martian energy every day and the Earth energy will ground you. But that would be so cool, like experiencing Earth transits. I know on Earth, the Earth sign is the opposite of the sun sign. Right. And not a lot of people realize that. And people are like, wait, it doesn't make sense. But okay, here's an example, kids. When it's Christmas time and we're in Saturn's territory and it is Capricorn time, the sun 
is in Capricorn, but the Earth is actually in Cancer. Right. So Capricorn is like, you know, legacy, work, getting things done. And when I think of like the end of the year, we're not doing that. Even if you're at work, you're like fucking off, like, you know, sending text messages, like watching YouTube videos, like calling in sick, not showing up, whatever. That's not very Capricorn like, but that's because the sun is in Cancer. Mm. Right? Excuse me. No, no, no. The Earth is in Cancer. I'm already screwing this up. The Earth is in Cancer. So when you think about, okay, what is Cancer? Well, you spend the holidays at home, baking cookies, hanging out with your family, eating, taking naps, whatever. It's pretty Cancerian. But not a lot of people think about things like that. I think the only time that we really seriously take the sun into consideration with the moon is when we see either a new moon or a full moon. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So I guess really what I'm getting at is if we do end up colonizing Mars and living on Mars, does Earth become this very separate energy that we bring in? Does Mars still play a role? Because when I think of Earth, I think of like what physically manifests. Like we have a lot of life. We have a lot of growth. We have a lot of Earth element. So if we're living on Mars, Is it going to be that really intense Martian energy all the time? Like the mythology says, the thousands of years of war. Are we just aggro all the time? I would imagine that's like my life with my moon and Aries. The Aries will definitely be. Like every day is like living on Mars. Ask anybody who deals with me on a regular basis. The Aries will be like, yes, I love it here. Ah." But I mean, I don't know why I get Well, you said colonize. So that's the, the key word. But I can imagine it's. I guess colder than Earth because it's farther away from the sun. Colder. Definitely colder, but I don't know. I feel like it would just be, it would be weird not having that. Like I kind of think about abstract things and like how astrology works for our our universe or our solar system specifically within the universe. But obviously it's not going to work for other life forms in other places. Right. Right. Venus is like, colonize me. You're too hot, honey. (laughs) Wouldn't that be nice? Can you imagine what it would be like on Venus? My ties for everybody. It would just be like my ties, tits out, and like I'm great melting. aesthetics, beautiful collarbones, and, and and cheekbones, <laughs> and I don't know. I have a lot of like Venus aspects in my chart, not just aspects, but also like Venus energy. She rules my chart. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And she opposes Pluto. Oh my god. Yeah, so that's. You've been to Hell and Bach with that one, huh? I mean, I had someone offer to, um, her words, not mine, suck and bloop me. Uh, <laughs> she was being very, I'm grateful, too, because I just made a skit about being sex zoned, and I got sex zoned. Wow. Well, I mean, you're putting it out there. Yeah. Is this where we, like, put your phone number on the bottom, where it's like, call him now for your free reading? Well, you know what? That's cra- I don't know how she got my number. Wait, what? I don't know how she got my <laughs> 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 that's what I'm saying like she texted me I'm like who is this just someone who cares about you was like well can oh you my god me? at least you got that text right at least you got that text right that's true I don't that's get those true. texts and then she texts my other phone from another number I'm like okay. how did you get this one <laughs> and in that text she's like I, I hope you don't think I'm a stalker and it's like I don't want to but like how did you get okay I can't tell you how many times when somebody says that <laughs> yeah 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 it's the venus pluto aspects that you have Mm -hmm. you're just you're just bringing them all in um okay so building on that whole okay what would life be like on mars right now mars is conjunct the north node in gemini and it is going to be um conjuncting i believe tomorrow what's going on here let's look at this Mm -hmm. oh yeah right tomorrow so it'll be tomorrow um you know yesterday today tomorrow there's a lot going on you want to break down maybe how this or why this is important i talked about it a little bit on on uh my live yesterday but i'm i really want to hear i want to hear your interpretation of that because you're a gemini it's 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 uh time to to just say it just to come out with it we are unlocking our true power ladies and gentlemen and i mean I think it's fascinating that the moon's going to be in Virgo when this is happening. So we get the real time. And it's a void moon. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Are you sure it's not trining? No, it's, it's void. I think it's void up until, 
I'll have to get the time, but I know it's a I know it's supposed to be void. Oh word. It's gonna be trying to Uranus in the beginning at least, and then it's gonna later try and Pluto after. So yeah, it'll definitely be void, perhaps like in the middle or we'll see, but it, I mean this is this is gonna ground the the real supernatural because of its opposition to neptune experience of unlocking true power especially your experience with synchronicities that have been converging and just been more and more crazy both good and bad so i think that's amazing that that's literally tomorrow because this, this experience is going to unfold and then we're going to have the full moon in libra and you're going to move forward applying your true power I mean, during airy season where you know who you are. Oh one one oh, thing, you. one thing that I would say is like when I think of the North Node, I think of Dharma and I think of like where we're going. So in a way, whatever's happening today, tomorrow, especially with this conjunction, it it's playing a role in your future because the future is abstract, at least from my perspective. The future is not completely set in stone. Many times the future is gonna be dependent on what you have been working on from the past and what you're consciously choosing to do now. So the future is fluid and there's many different variations, especially with the North Node in Gemini. What is Dharma? Dharma, the opposite of karma. It's what we come to achieve. So when you think oh. of like the South Node is where you've been, and what is familiar or what's easy or what's comfortable or what you've done before, or what you fall back into, the North Node is like oftentimes what your soul signed up for that is totally terrifying. <laughs> you need to learn how to participate in or um, kind of bring into your life in this incarnation. So Dharma is what we're here to achieve, basically. Well so said. many of these things, I think, that are taking off, like taking off um, especially right around now, uh, well, whatever's happening now is going to kind of play out more so when the sun goes into Gemini, when the, we have the eclipse that's coming in Gemini, um, and then also when Mercury goes retrograde and touches with the sun during that eclipse. So it's not like something that you want to chill and wait to utilize because Mars right. does not wait, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially in Gemini. Mars is now. And opportunities will arise once again. Right. Just so really unfolding. And Gemini being like conversations, contracts, text messages, emails. The actions that you take on this day will define the rest of your life. And it's going to be tricky with the squares because it's like there's there's what you think is right to do, which will be acceptable. And then there's what is true to you, which might be controversial. And that's going to screw a lot of people up because it's like, well, I've been told I'm supposed to do this, but the North Node wants you to do you. Well, yeah. And it's kind of like, it's funky because Mars conjunct the North Node, it has a very Aries feel and the sun is in Aries, so it's supporting it. But Mercury, okay, is squaring Mars. So there's a lot of yeah, like, yeah. is it this or is it that? And like Mercury in Pisces is more about, you know, intuition. It's less about communication. So in a way, I personally believe many people are coming to like this fork in the road right. at the end of May, beginning of June. And I've looked at the retrograde and I've looked at the eclipse and how it comes back and it actually Mercury will go retrograde and conjunct with the sun. So I think more information about the next leg of the journey or the next mm -hmm. leg of wherever we're going will come up at that insane. time oh my god and the sun is conjunct venus too so romantically um some people are very confused with the mercury square mars because it's like uh you you see signs and synchronicities and real time you know forward movement with one person but that you might see it for another person um single or taken as far as like feeling different facets uh of your partner in a relationship or if you're single different potential with other people and, and that can confuse people like who is it and and what the energy wants to teach you is what what is the truth and energy that you're seeing in these multiple people because you don't want to focus on the people you want to focus on the vibe that is reflecting to you and i hope that really helps because uh, it could it could be really easy with these squares too to get caught up on who is it what is, what is it even outside of romance and just instead focusing on the common energy that's attracting you to that yeah and then letting that bring that person uh 
really well not that they have to attract that person but letting that help you focus i'm wondering like just looking at some of the transits that's the 27th 28th 29th yeah i mean the sun and venus are are moving together pretty much until the beginning of next month so like this kind of sun venus kazimi thing that's kind of happening amazing i mean it's just it's all about self-love and be wants, becoming too. more aware of like the self the ego the personal joy and how when you're in tune to that it actually works in and it harmonizes with saturn and it harmonizes also with mars in the north node so mm. i think from a physical standpoint you know lots of car accidents i've seen lots of accidents lots of weird road constructions all kinds of weird technological glitches lots on the of... way here there was two accidents that were like literally less than half a mile away from each other and the yeah. driver was like that was weird like i saw three while i was driving today one that involved like five cars and they were like moving all of the today? traffic over yeah oh my God. so i didn't what even really want to be on the road today because i was like ah the last time I moved everything, I got in a car accident. So this time, I, and it was because, and I, it was not because, but I had also gotten food at that time too. So I was driving the U-Haul back to the mm -hmm. store and I got some Jack in the Box. I'm like, if I get in a car accident this time, I'm going to be oh, like, no. <laughs> The Jack in the Box gods were protecting you. Oh yes, and there was a fire sandwich too. Was it chicken sandwich? It was, it was the quad. I wanted. I saw the chicken sandwich, but I got the quad uh, <laughs> bacon. Whatever. I'm such a fat ass. Like I don't eat fast food anymore, right. but I will. De I definitely want to hear everybody talk about their fast food. I meals. shit because I've said for so long. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna eat healthy. I'm gonna eat healthy, and I'm talking about a uh, Jack in the Box. I'm eating healthy, y'all. Yeah. I just. <laughs> I had a cheat meal because, you know, my belly is coming out, too. Everyone's telling me, you're getting fat, Mike. Listen. Hey, we don't fat shame this on this channel, belly. okay? I am building this so that I have more love to give. This we don't is a fat shame. Belly. No. It's just the Venusian stuff. It's okay. Yes. You got it. You got it, babe. I'm going to you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, plus size girls, we got to stick together. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You're on a Centaurus. Like, fat is so in right now. I, I always joke. I'm like, if I was around, you know, like in the Venetian times where they have all those like thick, like white women, they're all naked, eating grapes, getting painted. Like, I would have been a fucking goddess. Someone showed me a meme saying that in some African tribes, the one with the biggest belly is the king so they're like see you're just in the wrong era i'm like yeah it's it's king negus right here negus whatever right. i'm kind of okay with it you know you gotta have a little weight to ground you baby otherwise you're gonna be one of those airy fairy psychics that just fucking blast off into the ethers you trying to you trying to hug a bunch of rocks you know you want this cuddly chubby bear like let's just be real somebody's you know? gotta keep you motherfuckers warm <laughs> you're not at trying night to have that's all i'm gonna light say a fire you're okay. right there you yeah go. try cuddling with a stick i hope they can move and shake like this <laughs> <laughs> light your bed on fire oh my god i'm just waiting for it i'm just waiting for it um yeah so you know i think the 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 message of mars conjunct the north node is now you gotta go now and you're yeah. ready you're wearing your red planet 13 hi we're trying to get sponsored please send us free weed we love your stores we love you um what was that? I had some asada fries. I had your chicken and waffles, y'all. I haven't even had the good. food there yet. You know Their who has? You know who has really good chicken and waffles? The Hash House of Go Go. Oh. They have chicken and waffle tower, so it's like a tower of waffles, and it's got like rosemary on top and all this fried chicken. So when I lived in LA, I would go to um, San Diego quite frequently and would go down there sometimes just to hang out and go to the beach and the bars and eat chicken and waffles. That's like four hours, right? Yeah. Where? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I will go to no San distance. San Diego is no, nice There's though. no too, too far for a good meal. <laughs> That's um, like from Vegas to uh, Cali. It's a day trip. That's well, you got to do what you got to do. Some people drive to Vegas for slots and hookers, and I drive to San Diego for chicken and waffles. I'm surprised you're getting this recommendation from a white woman. I'm, this, that's quite funny That's been me. quite the theme. That's very interesting. But, I mean, chicken and waffles, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> San Diego, I'm coming for you. What? Watch, y'all don't even know. About but they that. have it here though. Hash House of Go Go is here. That's oh, what here? I was saying. Yeah, they oh, have a couple man. locations here. We should go. We should. We should do that. Do like a mukbang or something like that. 
Oh my God. You do not want to see me <laughs> stuff my face with chicken and waffles live oh, on video because shit. part of me is like, no, I could never do that. And the other part of me is like, let's go. Yeah. Okay. We might have to do that actually. I was like thinking and, and, and kind of like working through all of this idea, uh, all these different ideas in my mind about um, what else we could do. And I was kind of thinking how you were talking about all of the um, like African stuff and like the Orishas and like the Ifa. So I'm in the process of trying to find somebody who can give us an Ifa reading. Oh my like God. you and I will both get a reading. Oh my God. And then we'll put it on the podcast. The last time I got an Ifa reading, um, he got the cowrie shells. He had the paper. It was, it was, it was, te- he, he didn't even say it in English. My friend had to translate from Spanish to tell me. Oh, so he was like a, like a Cuban one. He was literally, he was Cuban. Yeah. He was like a bubble owl. He was a bubble owl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was, he was his padrino. And dude was telling me all sorts. He, he, he actually told me that I was going to be a successful astrologer. He, he didn't know I do astrology. He's like, oh yeah, I see you're doing something that mixes well with Ifa. He knew my mom was a doctor. I didn't tell her that. I didn't tell him that. So like them, them Ifa reading. He said, uh, also Ifa is my path because it's, it's my, it's in my name. Ifa. So I just never really found like that's the mano de la rula exactly right? he had the mano de la rula yeah. right yeah he i just never found a, a baba lao to like walk the path with but i think that's my path like, i got you i, I know somebody oh, i yeah. have some i have some i have somebody in like every like little spiritual zone like i'm somebody who just kind of goes in and dances and makes friends and i have you know people who the hoodoo who, who do you. that and i have people who i mean yeah i i so, some a lot of things that i i probably will wait to disclose until we have the podcast but because it's hard to find people who don't just want your money and like kind of drag you along so I, i'm just wanting to find that uh but i think i'm ready now so i think we should do a reading because i haven't had an ifa reading in probably like three or four years and the ones that i have had were like scary accurate scary and accurate. now it's been like three or four years and I have questions. I got initiated I in Palo Mayombe in Puerto Rico, 2012. But I've never gotten my Elegua. I've never gotten anything. Like, I feel like I'm abandoned or stranded. But I know that's a part of my path. Yeah. And and I know that the Arisha still walk with me. So, I mean, thank you because I'm super excited now. I, I, I feel like I'm about to really kick this off. And, and what I want to say about the Mars North Node, too, about all this is with Aries everything you're doing right now is like starting imagine if you started disney before you knew it was gonna be disney like imagine disney before he knew disney would be one of the biggest companies it's like you're starting it right now you may not realize that it's right you know not the next big thing but like the most legendary aspect or, or just you know something you really love doing so you definitely want to keep that attitude that what you're embarking on is so interesting because i was like thinking about because sometimes i'll go through like i'll go through my calendar and i'll put like notes about astrology things and things that are happening and just in the back of my mind thinking about some of the things that i'm actually supposed to be doing like tomorrow saturday sunday like there's definitely some stuff that i probably should put on the agenda to like actually like really make sure that i'm doing it you know mm-hmm. especially because i'm in a mars annual perfection year so right. it seems to be pretty important for me and i mean like ah oh, this energy is so exciting i'm not gonna lie like there's a bunch of bullshit behind the scenes but i feel like this excitement is just so individual like yeah we, we get to make it what we want to and Nothing can take that. So um, at one level, there's like, because Venus will sextile Jupiter. And at one level, it's like, make it count. But at another level, you have to forget you've completed. You have to forget. That's hilarious. You have to remember that you've completed an 11-year cycle since Jupiter and Aries. And you're literally reaping and manifesting that all week, all year, really. How do how do you figure the Jupiter and Aries relates to the Mars because it's the North Node? Jupiter Aries. Yeah, you said Jupiter Aries. Yeah. Okay. So Jupiter uh, before it went to Aries was conjunct Uranus and Pisces, and then it went into Aries. That's right. I remember that. Okay. Right. So it's completing the cycle. Exactly. So which is like wow. So people who have personal placements in Gemini and Aries would then feel it stronger, mm-hmm. or who have a Mars ruled chart. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Huh. Oh, yeah. Huh, 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 huh. I mean, the synchronicities have been insane. Well, there's been, if everything feels very, Her. very rushed to me. Yeah, like, everything true. has felt very rushed. Like, it's like, you got to go, we got to go now. And I feel like the discombobulation of Mercury is, like, kind of getting your sea legs for some things. And kind of just, like, okay, it's, like, the universe's way of saying, okay, fuck it, we're going live. <laughs> Maybe there's going to be some hiccups. But, <laughs> but we, we still have to do it because it's part of whatever we need to be doing <coughs> in June. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, my God. Like, I love that you said June is going to be... Because, like, last June was crazy. And so this June... Is just gonna bring back all those pent up emotions, and I think whereas last time, it was more you know everyone was shocked. No one really knew what to expect. I think everyone's gonna be ready. Like it's still gonna be shocking, but like I think it's gonna be so exciting this time in like the craziest pandemonium way. Well, yeah, like, Mars conjunct the North Node isn't just all. I mean, it's not all rainbows and fucking butterflies. Like it's not. It, you know, I think that. Yes, it's coming into a square with Neptune, but Mars is aggression. It's war. It's volatility. It's fighting. And in Gemini, it's fighting with words, fighting with keyboards. It can be fighting with your fist, sure, your hands, because it's Gemini. But I think a lot of people are going to realize that your words are super powerful right now. Mm. So when, when Mars is touching with the North Node, it's really important to really be careful what you say and practice what you preach and realize that you have to walk the walk and talk the talk. You can't just be full of shit. You have to show up and you have to do it because now is the time. No, now is, that's the best, like, I mean, personally, I feel more in my purpose than ever. And it's that feeling like, wow, I've been preparing for, I've been wanting this for so long. And now it's like, I'm, we're, You're on we're that, in this position. that north node in your first house high right now. Get yeah. out of here. Get out of here. And Saturn on my north node. Like, oh, oh, oh it's yeah. Time. Well, wait, what degree is your north node? Uh, eight degrees. Okay, so mine's 21. So Jupiter is hovering there. Yeah, I have Saturn and Jupiter in my fifth house right now. Oh my God, you have Jupiter and Saturn. Oh, you have Jupiter in your north node. Oh my Jupiter's God. Jupiter's on my north node right now. Wow. Yeah, right now. Well, it's been like the last two or three days. And like there's been some very interesting things that have happened. Word. Not all of the fifth house things have happened, but In your fifth, we'll right, see. Right, 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 right. That to me is like not even a ticking time bomb. But it's, it's weird like, because it's Aquarius in the fifth house, right? Because yeah. when you think the fifth house, it's like me, me, me. But Aquarius is like it actually involves like a lot of other people. Right. Um, and my my North Node's at 21. So I have a little bit of time before Saturn shows up next year. And then it's going to start squaring all of my fucking Scorpio. And I'm going to be a puddle of mush. Well, I will. I don't know if it's because my moon's in Capricorn. But Saturn on my North Node has been very, very good to me. Really? Oh, at an yeah. eight. Oh, yeah. So you're getting laid, huh? Uh, <laughs> I said it on him. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I love how I look to the left and I see the word female. I'm just saying What's it's female. Just- <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, that's a fun degree. Right. I mean, and it's also like it's late. it's it's playing with your Mars and it's playing with it your. I mean, with no, your Pluto and your Venus. Mm-hmm. It's that T square. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's making things happen. Oh. The fact that you're not even feeling that is like amazing to me. Like that makes me have hope for the future. But I see it might be because my moon's in Cap and Saturn just kind of like. Oh, yeah. Saturn and Pluto have been there just whipping you for years. Pluto has been raping me. (laughs) I don't know how else to put it. No, I get it. I totally get it. I've had Pluto touch every single one of my personal planets literally by a a conjunction like Mm. my whole life. Like I just recently got. Pluto off my back it hit my, it's conjunct my sun it's conjunct my mercury it hit my uranus my venus my saturn my neptune I, this whole last year it was squaring my moon and i'm like please let it be over like i'm done like please i think saturn on my north node is going to be good to me next year but mm-hmm. just some of the things that's going to come with that in the fifth house i'm like <gasps> plus at 21 degrees too it's probably going to be like so much it's gonna be so much higher and then uranus is gonna be squaring it at a higher degree if you or any loved ones have been victimized by pluto please call us at 1-800 yeah it's like by planet you know i think a lot of other people can 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 totally feel that like they also have their passport that says that they've had it stamped to hell so if, if you've been victimized by pluto um call us maybe we can help get you 
get you some we're not gonna help you just kidding we've been <laughs> <fucking too. laughs> well we can talk about we can we can, we dish can talk tea. about it by the way you know everything that like venus is in the red carpet right now i, I love the astrology right now like with venus kaziming and just Tra- think about it venus is traveling to the sun so that she can hurry up to mars and smash mars and just have the best passionate sex with mars and are leo. they gonna touch they're gonna touch in leo oh that's right opposite saturn retrograde oh it's gonna be on my south node though in talk a- about getting laid oh, yes, <laughs> i actually like mars and venus and leo i really like that energy because i feel like it's just red carpet it's gonna be pizzazz oh i'm really looking forward to that with the the oppositions to jupiter when jupiter comes back and it goes retrograde when it goes in and out of pisces Mm -hmm. jupiter and pisces will be nice too i think that's gonna be a a nice little change and i think the further and further that jupiter and saturn get the more that we're gonna have travel and things that are gonna open up a little bit more so all right and venus catching up with the sextile is gonna really bring up to speed see everything with venus here is like new cycles of dynamic love partnership sex raw rawness raw sex and it's like with mars and gemini i saw your your raw sex posts Hurrah. i've seen those that was raunchy <laughs> even by a sun pluto and scorpio standard oh word i've been so desensitized now that like i don't even know what's raunchy anymore and people are like oh wow this is a wild post and i'm like i don't even like i'm just so gone right now like just, what was your post it was like the last person that you had that type of thing. <laughs> the last person, the last person you had raw sex with, you will marry, uh, or would you marry the last person you had raw sex with? Yes or no? And you said yes. I did say yes. Thankfully, um, you know, I, so, I, sex yeah. is weird for me. It's like yeah. ordained, but yes, I would. It was a, uh, I would. It oddly yes. enough too, but like, yeah, might as well. Um, I just laughed at that. I did not say anything. I just was like, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants Guess to hear what about she had my the sex same life. sun and moon is. Aquarius? No? Pisces? Scorpio? We've met her before. <laughs> Except instead of an Aries rising, she's a Sag rising. I'm like going through my mental Rolodex of people you fucked. Hold on a second. No, 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 no. You haven't. No, no. I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, the the last person who I. Yeah, I know what you. I. Yep. I totally get where you're going with that. Her sun and moon. Uh, she has the same sun and moon as someone we both know. Oh. <laughs> That's a hard pass. Oh, Did you see God. the look on my face? Like I literally yeah. was like. That was the Aries moon right now. Oh. Yeah, that's the grudges that I never let go of. There are very few people on my shit list, but God Mm. help those people because anything and everything bad that's happened to you, you brought on yourself. I don't want to gossip, but like, that's why I said oddly enough because the same kind of antics and energy kind of came up too. Like, we were were arguing, we were fighting. It's kind of like a notebook kind of thing without the romance. (laughs) (laughs) What's the point? (laughs) Right, right. I'm talking about, okay, I don't want to say too much. I I love what i will say is this because i can speak on this the the axis of scorpio and taurus is very intense and psychotic and like passionate she had 12 house venus and scorpio like like she was nuts but in in, in a good way kind of not really, really freaky good lovers. sexy though oh she's yeah. sexy though i'll say that yeah, yeah like 12 house venus is like talking maybe they're drug dealers the maybe mm. they're they're strippers or witches. Or witches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm kind Definitely of into that. Witches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whatever. Don't hit on the witches. It's, oh my god. You guys all want to laugh about shit until, until your house is on fire and your dog dies. I will say calling, that's the first woman that I've ever. We were on streams, but that was the first woman I ever climaxed with without ever penetrating. Like I didn't. Like I didn't even. I didn't even like bust too. But like I, I've never. I've never felt that before. I thought that was interesting. She probably served you her period blood. I mean, I'm gonna be really honest with you. We we did a candle ritual together, but I was other than that, you know. AKA, you sold your soul. I did to the uh, witchy women. And Capricorn is the devil, so. Huh. I mean, those are the best. Those are the sexiest signs. I cannot lie. 
Well, we've talked about Mars. We've talked about uh, Mike's sexual endeavors. We've talked about the future. You don't think I have a sex life? That that was like years ago. <laughs> it's it's really a job. Saturday night, <laughs> like, right? It's just every now and then. It's like, I'll see you again in two or three years. Like, uh, but it's all good. I got my Saturn return, so that might actually change. Like, I could probably, if I want to stop being a hermit and get out and talk to people, probably. Well, yeah, because it's heading for your ninth, right? Mm. Or is it there yet? It's there. Oh, okay, cool. It's it, Saturn's is, is in my tenth now. Okay. And I'm making boss moves. And you're making uh, Midheaven podcasts. We talked about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which All right. It was awesome. That just kind of came. Am I missing anything? With the tenth house stuff? No, just am I missing anything for the just to recap the Mars North Node stuff? You know what? We didn't mention. The Uranus semi sextile. Because that's what's gonna make what we're doing never before been done. And so this is that whole feeling where it's like if you're too preoccupied with doing what is traditionally or socially acceptable versus what's unique to you, which what is unique to you might be repulsive to other people or different, you're going to really shortchange yourself. So yeah, I think that's the big message. Like, wow, I didn't even really think about the the semi sex tile like that. Because it's never what you're, what we're, what you're doing has never before been done, so it can't be compared. So it's not going to be recognizable, and so that could initially, like many geniuses, bring a lot of like friction. And I was gonna say earlier, like, oh, I don't want to say too much, and I was about to say too much, so I'm glad I didn't say that. But other than that, like. The, the, this is which is so fascinating like it's literally ha- whatever is happening in the next 24 hours is going to change your life for the rest of your life yeah and just for like those of you guys who are into ritual and stuff something that i did is um i went and took like some dragon's blood resin and i grinded it down into like a powder i mixed in some hops i mixed in some chamomile for mars some lavender for mercury um what else did I put in there? A couple other, I think some ginger, just some other like Mars and Mercury based herbs, basically, mm. with the intention of putting that on top of candles just to burn um, over the next couple days for intentions. Can be a really strong time to just take a piece of paper out, write down your intentions, not in the I am manifesting, it's the I am doing, because that's Mars. I am selling my book. I am moving to that city. I am getting married. I am buying the house. Whatever it is, talk about it in the I am as in it's happening now. And um, definitely work with like incense and work with fire, whether you have a fire safe like little cauldron or a pot or even a candle and write and speak those intentions out loud and really work with the North Node because Anything that you start, you agree to, you sign, anything like that has a lot of potency, um, a lot of potency over the next 48 hours. So and once again, with the moon in Virgo, it'd be so keenly receptive to details because everything you think and everything you say real time will instantly open a door to act on. And you have to be you have to be aware. It'll just go over your nose. Things will come very fast. Like it's already happening today. The next couple of days, opportunities, <coughs> phone calls, emails. Don't sleep on those um, opportunities that pop up and pay attention to the synchronicities that you may find even in words, license plates, numbers, books, um, anything that Mercury comes through. Even a song on the radio can suddenly trigger something and make you realize like, oh, my God, this is really happening. I do have to go and do this thing. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys do it. We're going to talk more about magic and all that stuff, I'm sure, in the future because Mike has a couple of questions for me. You have to see my apothecary cabinet. I just built everything out. I have like, yeah, all the jars and everything's labeled and everything's ready to go. So maybe we'll we'll do a um, maybe we'll do a. I need um, a witch tour. wifey. I need I need a girlfriend or a wifey who's with the shits and knows a witch because I just need to I need to be put. I, I just I just want to come back home and she's dressing candles or like talking <laughs> to ocean like. It's not necessary, right? But, like, it's necessary. Maybe we should create an application form for Mike to have a witchy woman girlfriend. And I will do interviews and 
determine who might be the best candidate. The only the only thing about that is some women some women aren't like witches, right? Like they might be materialistic, but they're still witches, right? Like they don't do the like the the traditional witchy stuff. But. Girls tell you they're not doing it, but they're doing it. Even, like, like that's the thing about that energy like and like feminine energy is like we all have our weird little routines right. where we have like a little ritual or a morning ritual or how we organize things or putting things away. Some of us are more out of the broom closet than other people, right? No, we can find facts. someone. We can find someone. I'm kind of I'm kind of into it. Maybe we can like create like a a cult singles um like speed dating or something. Wouldn't that be cool? Mm, that would be genius. Yeah. Well, there's just way too many witches Freaking and far witches. too little warlocks out there. So we need them to show up. Someone said uh, men could be witches too, but I'm like, aren't they called wizards? But I don't know. I guess the wizard is witches, warlocks, um, wizards. I kind of like warlocks. They're like the bad yeah. boys of the occult community. Warlock sounds way more badass. Except guys who can do magic freak me out because I don't know. I can't imagine like some guy like trying to get my hair and like putting it in a jar or. I don't know. That that's kind of scares me. It's but like especially it's with like, like the cancers and the Virgos too. That's true, actually. That's really true. And nice with it. <sighs> well, stay tuned for Mike's um, witchy girlfriend application. I'm sure that will be coming in a future episode. Um, thank you guys for tuning in, for like, sharing, subscribing. We're trying to get our subscribers up. So if you guys want to share this, and if you want to. Yeah, try to get your friends in on it. We're going to keep doing these weekly. How many lives we do, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll be back. And thank you for tuning in and joining both of us. Yeah, we had a good time. This was a good chat. And until next time, we will see you soon. Take care, guys. Peace.